here we are. This is what the other side looks like. In this video, I'm going to tell you what's going on with the code that we just wrote in the previous lecture. Then I'm going to tell you exactly what the differences are between an uncontrolled and a controlled environment. So first, I'm going to show you a flowchart to explain what's going on with that code inside of our component. So the first thing that happens is, when the user types in that input, then instantly our callback gets invoked. The one we are passing to on charge right here. Then inside that callback, we pull the current value of the input or whatever the user just typed in, and then we update our state on our component by calling set state with that new value. So now, this state entry is going to contain whatever the user just typed into that input. Remember, anytime that we call set state, the component is going to automatically render itself. So the render method right here gets called a second time the instant the user types something in there. Now, when the component renders, we'll take that value of that this state entry right here, and we assign it to the value prop of the input. The value prop right there is going to essentially overwrite whatever text is already inside of the input. So now let me just demonstrate that to you pretty easily. So I'll change it to some random text. Save it, and I'll flip back over to the browser, and you'll see that my text input right here now has all of whatever that was that I just typed in. So whatever we assign to that value prop is what the input is going to show. We take whatever the string is inside the this.state.entry and then push it into that input value, and then we show it in the input on our browser. So this entire series of flow is a controlled element with the refactor that we just did. And we had an uncontrolled element. Now let's talk about exactly what the difference is between the two and why we prefer controlled elements. So let's pull up another quick diagram here. Now this is a diagram of the code before we refactored it to be a controlled component. So let's first consider the older version of the code. On the left-hand side, I've got a diagram of what we called the React. This is essentially all of our components, all of our classes. And then on the right-hand side is the HTML world. And this is essentially all of the HTML that is showing up inside of the application and displaying some information to the user. Now, with the old version of our code, how would you answer if I asked you what's the value of the input right now? You see, with the older version of our code, the only way that we could somehow figure out what that value of our input was at any instant in time was to reach into the DOM to find that input element and then pull the value out of it. That was the only way that we could answer that question. So we had to reach into the DOM and pull out the value. Well, there was technically a time when our React component understood what the value of the input was. During all the periods in time, the source of data inside our application was inside of our HTML document, and it was not inside of our React component. And that is the most critical part to understand. We don't like to store information inside of our HTML elements. Instead, we want to centralize all of the information that we have inside of our React component. So we're not going to somehow store data inside the DOM. So let's have a look at the same diagram but after we refactor it to be controlled, and now if I ask you the value of the input, 
you don't have to go over to the DOM. Instead, we can look directly at our React component. We can look at the state object and see my component has an entry of hello world. So what does that mean? It means that the value of my input must be hello world. So we will not be going into the DOM and finding the current value of the input. We're always going to just make use of our React component. And that's the difference between a controlled and uncontrolled component. So what's the best thing about this approach and what makes it so easy? Uh, before I show it to you, let's change this value back to this state entry. So let's say, for example, if I ever wanted to render my search input with a, I don't know, a default value. So now when my component first renders the input, it will be rendered with the value of A or whatever. Right? So let's see it. Yeah, it's there. And I can change it and refresh, and it's right there again. So that's easy to do, yeah? Now, the other thing that we can very easily do is manipulate the whatever the user is typing in. For example, let's say that we want to force this text input to always have capitalized values inside of it, no matter what the user types. So to do that, we would find right here where we get the callback for the on change. And we would say to uppercase, and we're going to take that value, and we're going to force it to be uppercase. So I'll save this. So now when I type in here, I am forced to enter capitalized letters. So it's very easy when you start using controlled components doing something like this, yeah? So, okay, I, I, I think that I bashed you over the head about controlled inputs. I think you'll be able to use them properly. So let's change it back to what it was before. Now, we don't want to have a default value, and we don't want to have forced uppercase text. So now let's take a break right here, and we will continue in the next video. See you there.